Me gustaría empezar con una historia. I'd like to start with a story. It's not my own. It comes from Howard Thurman, an African-American activist, philosopher, civil rights leader, and theologian who lived from 1899 to 1991. When he was young, he would read to his grandmother two or three days a week. She would often choose Bible passages, but he noticed that she never wanted to hear readings from the letters of Paul. One day, he worked up the courage to ask her why. Solía leerle a su abuela dos o tres días a la semana. Ella generalmente elegía pasajes bíblicos, pero Howard se dio cuenta que ella nunca quiso que la leyera de las cartas de Pablo. Un día, Howard se armó de valor y le pregunta por qué. Her response? She grew up as an enslaved person on a plantation in Florida. And the plantation owner's minister would sometimes hold services for the enslaved people. That minister always used Paul in his sermons. And three or four times a year, he would use the passage, slaves, be obedient to those that are your masters as though to Christ. Esclavos, obedezcan a sus amos como a Cristo. Thurman's grandmother said, I promised my maker that if I ever learned to read, and if freedom ever came, I would not read that part of the Bible. Le prometí a mi creador que si yo llegaba a aprender a leer y si lograba la libertad, que nunca leería esa parte de la Biblia. Thurman's story illustrates one way the Bible was used in the United States to reinforce the institution of slavery and the subjugation of black people. It also reminds us that the way a biblical text has been read, understood, and used can make it distasteful, painful, or harmful for people with particular identities. Esto también nos recuerda que la manera en la que un texto bíblico se ha leído, entendido y usado, lo puede llegar a tornar en algo desagradable, doloroso y peligroso para personas de ciertas identidades. It isn't just the command, slaves obey your masters, that carries a legacy of pain and oppression. Paul wrote a very short letter to Philemon, a fellow Christ believer. And if you open your Bibles to the letter to Philemon, you might want to have a look at that passage in your discussion. In it, he describes how Onesimus, who was enslaved in Philemon's household, has come to Paul and has become a Christian. We don't know the full background story. Perhaps Philemon mistreated Onesimus and Onesimus ran away. Perhaps Onesimus fled because he feared punishment for something that happened. Maybe Onesimus just sought freedom from slavery. In any event, he made his way to Paul and Paul intercedes on his behalf. Paul sends Onesimus back with a letter and tells Philemon Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. Especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. Sounds good, right? Some abolitionists thought so, and used this letter as proof that Paul's writings teach Christians to put an end to slavery. Así lo vieron abolicionistas y usaron esta carta como evidencia de que los escritos de Pablo le enseñan a los cristianos a ponerle fin a la esclavitud. But other readers instead focused on the fact that Paul sent Onesimus back, and the passage was used to argue that the biblical author Paul would support the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, which legally required people to send runaway enslaved people back to their masters. Readers looked to Paul as an important authority, but people on very different sides of the same issue all found in his writings what supported their ideas about what was right. Is Paul racist? Is the Bible racist? I could talk about how slavery in the Greco-Roman world wasn't based on race or ethnic identity, 
and how Paul thought Jesus was coming back any day, so he didn't think it was the right time to start working on abolishing slavery. Instead, let me propose some alternative questions. Permítanme mejor plantear las siguientes preguntas alternativas. How do readers and interpreters of the Bible use texts like Paul's letters to shape the world we live in? ¿Cómo es que lectores e intérpretes bíblicos usan textos como las cartas de Pablo para formar el mundo en, que, en el que vivimos? How does the world we live in shape the way each of us finds connection, condemnation, hope, pain in biblical writings like the letters of Paul? ¿Cómo es que el mundo en que vivimos forma la manera en que experimentamos la conexión, la condena, la esperanza y el dolor en las escrituras bíblicas como las cartas de Pablo? So those are the questions I'll leave you with for your discussion. What are Bible stories and teachings that you feel have shaped the world you live in? What are some ways you experience confusion or disconnect when you encounter the Bible from your place in today's world? Go for it. <laughs>